Good morning, everybody. Uh, almost 10 o'clock here this morning on Wednesday, the 20th of May. <laughs> I got to think it through. I'm not even sure what month it is these days, apparently. We got 30 verses in chapter number 20. So let's pray and then get going. Father, we love you and we're thankful for this book and what it teaches us. Help us to abide among the wise here this morning. Grant us wisdom, please, in Christ's name. Amen. Verse number one, chapter number 20. Keep in mind, I'm not preaching sermons here, so uh, I'm just discussing things. Verse number one, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Of course, this is talking about the consumption of alcohol. Wine is a mocker. It'll make a mockery of you, of those who participate in it. Strong drink, talking about alcohol and liquor consumption, is raging. It'll take over your life. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You can't be tricked by alcohol and, and the, the things that it does, supposedly does for you. Alcohol does far greater harm in people's lives than it benefits them. It's a depressant, and uh, we don't need anything else in this life or this world that's going to depress us. I think you'll agree. Verse 2, the fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. So you don't want to rile up the authorities that are set over you. You don't want to uh, go after your boss. You don't want to go after your supervisor. You don't want to go after the government um, solo, right? The old saying is you can't fight City Hall. Now we also know of revolutions that take place. That's when everybody bands together to uh, rise up. That's one thing. But to individually attack the king, you're just going to hurt yourself. Verse 3, it is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. Actually choosing to walk away from the fight will better your reputation than engaging in the fight. And then it says every fool will be meddling. Fools like to fight. They like to be involved in strife. They like to argue. Best thing you can do is refuse to play their games. The, uh, there's an old saying that says, uh, never wrestle with a pig because you both get dirty in the process and the pig likes it. And so it's smart to just stay away from it. Verse four, the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. So we'll attack this uh, each section. Sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Lazy people always have an excuse for why they can't do what it is they're supposed to do. And so their excuses only please themselves. The sluggard says, boy, it sure is cold out there. I think I'll wait. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. They procrastinate. Then it never gets done. The result is, therefore, shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. So when it comes time to harvest the crop, well, he didn't get the seed planted, or he didn't get it watered or fertilized, and so he's got nothing. And notice, then he starts begging, and he still has nothing, and here's why. People don't mind helping those who've been making an effort, but people don't want to help those who aren't making any effort at all. If they see that you've just been laying around doing nothing, uh, you've been playing while they've been working, then it comes time for need. Uh, they say, you know what, I'm not going to help you because you weren't willing to, to make an effort. You weren't willing to try. So uh, keep that in mind. Verse 5, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding draw will draw it out. So what this verse is teaching is we all know deep down in our hearts what the right thing to do is, but sometimes it takes a counselor or someone to help us be willing to admit that or give us a little bit of encouragement to do the right thing. Verse 6, most men will proclaim every one his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. So everybody's willing to talk about how wonderful they are, how awesome they are, how intelligent they are, how wise they are, how productive they are, how efficient they are. But how about not talk about it and just do it? 
How about just prove to others that you can? A faithful man who can find. You can find people who boast about themselves all day long, but show me somebody who's just showing up, doing the job. They don't need that pat on the back. They're just faithful. Verse 7, the just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So the lives we live will be a blessing to the children that we're bringing behind us. Uh, they'll see our example. They'll walk according to our example. Children will do what we do that more than they will do what we say. In fact, most of the time, if, if, all you're, if you're saying, do as I say, not as I do, that's going to be thrown out the window. They're not going to be interested in that. Verse 8, a king sitteth in the throne, I'm sorry, a king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. So a king that executes judgment, he's going to have a uh, more moral uh, kingdom. So <clears throat> there's a there's a verse in Ecclesiastes that says that sin and immorality prospers because judgment is not executed speedily. When, when we don't enforce the laws, when we don't hold people accountable for their actions, then we see an increase in crime and immorality. Next, verse 9, who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin. A hypothetical question here, of course, no one can say that. No one can say their heart is pure from their sin because they've made it so. Only Jesus Christ and his shed blood can make us clean from our sin. Verse 10, diverse weights and diverse measures. Both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. So again, we talked about this, the scale that's used at the market in trading. If you have false weights or false measures, then you're, you're cheating people, you're stealing from people. And the idea is to be honest in your dealings, to uh, be upright and, and forthcoming when you're trading with others. Verse 11, even a child is known by his doings whether his work be pure and whether it be right. I remember growing up, we, uh, we used to hear and use a word, brat. Some kids were little brats. Maybe you're old enough to remember that. I don't hear anybody calling their children brats anymore. Uh, they, they tell them they're awesome and wonderful and perfect, and none of that's true. <laughs> kids need guidance and correction and discipline, and they do need love, and they need compassion, they need affection, but uh, we, we've got to quit telling our kids that they're perfect. Once in a while, you need to look a kid in the eye and say, you're acting like a spoiled brat. Amen. All right, verse number 12, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. So there is a, uh, a nod to the creation by the Lord God. I, I talk a lot about when I'm preaching about evolution versus creation, and I talk about the eyeball and what an amazing thing that it is, uh, how it can just simply through taking in light and uh, our nervous system, our, our brain can interpret what the eye is seeing, what's coming in through the lens. It's miraculous, and I don't believe evolution, not even for half a second. Uh, the hearing ear, similarly, you know, just sound waves, vibrations in the air that the ear is able to take and, and interpret and the mind is able to conceive as sound. It's pretty incredible. Next, love not sleep lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. So again, a, a warding against being lazy, not wanting to work, wanting to stay in bed and sleep too much. Verse 14, it is not, it is not, saith the buyer, but when he is gone his way, then he boasteth. So if you're, I don't know if this is to teach Rehoboam how to sell or how to deal with customers, but the customer will always downplay the product. Ah, yeah, you know, th this is nice, but it's not worth what you're asking. Can you come down on the price a little bit? In other words, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not worth what you're saying it is. Then they get a good deal, and they go tell their friends, man, you won't believe what I was able to buy this for. I got a really good deal on this. And so that's what it's saying. Next verse. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. So again, knowledge and wisdom are worth more than gold and rubies. Verse 16, 
take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. So two ways to lose money. One, co-signing on loans for people that can't borrow money on their own. And two, run with the wrong kind of woman, run with the wrong kind of men. Both of those things will make you broke. Verse 17, bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. So <clears throat> the profit from wrongdoing at first seems like a blessing to the one who's profiting, but in the end, it's not going to turn out so well for him. Verse 18, every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. So before you take on a serious endeavor, you might want to get some counsel and advice from someone who knows before you do. Verse 19, he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So this is reiterating even what we learned yesterday. Uh, he that goeth out about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. So gossips are going to talk, and they're going to talk behind people's back. And then here's something new we haven't seen yet in the book. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. In other words, people that try to get information out of you. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to act like your friend so that they can get the information they want from you. Once they have that information, they're going to go tell other people about it. Uh, they don't know how to keep a secret. They don't know how to have a confidence with another individual. They've got to blab it. And usually the reason they're blabbing it is to hurt the reputation of the person they got the information from or the information that it's about. Verse 20, whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. God blesses greatly those who honor their parents, and he rebukes sharply those who disrespect their parents. Whether or not the parent is godly or saved or respectable, the job of the child is to honor, revere, and respect mom and dad and, uh, and not speak down to them or about them. And when we do, the Bible says in Ephesians 5 or 6, rather, uh, this is the first command with promise because God promised those who honored their father and mother would have a long life. Verse 21, an inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. So this is the story of the prodigal son, isn't it? He got his inheritance early before his father passed, but the end of it, he just squandered it. He, he, he ended up spending all of it, and then he ended up working in the hog pen, feeding the hogs, starving himself. So you don't want to get your inheritance hastily. Verse 22, say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. So it's not our job to seek revenge or get vengeance on people when they've done us wrong. Our job is just to turn it over to the Lord and let him handle it. Verse 23, diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. We've already covered that even in this own chapter. 24, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? You know, we think we have our plans made. I'm going to do this for, until this time, and then I'm going to switch and do this until that time, and then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to retire here, and I'm going to move there. And, and God says, you know, I've already got some steps of your life planned out. Uh, you're wasting your time. Verse 25, it is a snare to the man who, devour, uh, who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make inquiry. <clears throat> I'm stumped. No idea. Next verse. 26. A wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. So a wise king doesn't allow the wicked to gather together, to congregate, to work together, to cooperate. You've got to separate it. It's just like in school. Remember in elementary school, teachers see a couple boys or girls really getting along, talking, cutting up, and what do they do? They separated them. Hey, pick up your stuff and move to this desk over here on the other side of the room. When police show up on the scene of, a, of an altercation or a crime, the first thing they do is separate the people so that they can't... Uh, give testimony together and, and corroborate a story. And so this is what the wise king does with the wicked. 
Verse 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. And so our own spirit even will convict us of our choices and our behavior. Uh, our conscience will get to work on us, and God uses our own conscience to help bring us to the place he wants us to be. Verse 28, mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. <clears throat> so we've, we've read the first part before, mercy and truth preserve the king. A good balance of, of enforcing the law and holding people accountable, at the same time showing mercy when prudent and wise. And then it says, his throne shall be upholden by mercy. People will respect and love a king who shows mercy rather than harshness. Verse 29, the glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. And we see that played out in real life, don't we? Young men are strong and active and capable of hard physical work. Old men are not as capable or strong as the young men are, uh, but their gray head shows wisdom and experience and uh, gives them authority. Verse number 30, last verse of the chapter, the blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so do stripes the inward parts of the belly. What that means is consequences for actions will cause us to change our behavior. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil. So when a fool receives stripes uh, as a punishment for their behavior, then oftentimes they'll straighten up. Now a scorner won't, and oftentimes, depending on how uh, far gone a fool is, they will not. But a simple person or a fool that's just on the, the, you know, just barely a fool, is that such a thing? You know what I mean? It depends on the degree of their foolishness. Some fools double down, but a lot of times if you correct someone, they'll come around. All right, there it is. Chapter number 20. We got that one in the books. I'm glad you're still with us. Uh, we'll continue on tomorrow about this time. Have you have, hope you have a great day. Church tonight at Lighthouse, uh, 7 p.m. You're welcome to come to the property and uh, be a part of the service, or we're still streaming if you feel like that's best for you. We're in uh, Revelation. Let's see, chapter 8, I believe. Revelation 8. All right, we'll see you then. God bless you.